Hello and welcome to the garden. Well, I thought I might get a little bit of sewing in today before the moody weather arrived, but I've just got down here, got set up, and the rain has started. But I want to carry on anyway because it's going to be a few days of nasty weather now, and I've got some stuff that I really want to get sewn, some direct and some in the greenhouse and I don't want to wait until say four or five days time when this bad weather has gone away. So I apologize if there are raindrops appearing on the lens or some wind noise on this video. Um, nothing I can do about that I'm afraid. The first thing I'm sowing is Chima di Rapa, also known as broccoli rabe, sprouting turnip tops, rapini and probably various other names. Now I made an early sowing of this in the cold frames at the start of the year. It's one of the first things I started direct and that cropped in perfect time just before I needed the frames for setting out the melons and that was great. The reason that cropped so quickly was because that is a so-called 40 day variety. It took a little longer than that of course because I started these off during some pretty cold weather. Now I don't like to sow this really for the summer months because there's every chance that it's going to run straight to seed but you can get away with a very early sowing I think of one of the quick varieties and later in the year you can then make sowings to, to crop during the cooler part of the year. So I think now is probably a reasonable time to do this. So I've got two varieties here. One is a 40 day and one a 90 day. Now, many of the varieties of Chima di Rapa, they have no other name. They're just known by 40, 60, 90, 120, however many days to maturity. But there are a few particular regional varieties as well. So this is a really delicious veg. Um, I'm not a huge fan of broccoli myself. I grow it for my wife, she loves it. But the Chima di Rapa, I really like. It's, it's that little bit of bitterness that really lifts the flavor of this. So I'm gonna sow, I think, three rows of the 90 day sort and three of the 40 day. So I'm gonna plant this in the same bed where I set out some cabbages recently. This had shallots in it before. All I've done is just give it a quick rake over. I'm not putting any feed or, or mulch on it for this crop. <sighs> well, the one good thing about this weather is that I'm not gonna to need to water these seeds in. So I'm just going to figure out a sensible spacing. I will need to get a proper cover on this later. I think if I start the first row here, I can just squeeze in three rows. It's a little bit, it's a little bit tight, but I'm going to do that anyway. So I'll just use the board to get my rows reasonably straight. Just drag out a drill. So this one's going to get the 90 day variety. Now the 90 day plants are much bigger of course than the 40 day sort. So I don't want to sow these very thickly and I will have to come through and thin these anyway. Um, but I'll try and start with a sensible sort of sowing here, not too thick. You can thin in stages and you can, of course, eat the thinnings, that's fine. Now 
Now normally I would give that a, a, a good water or I would have soaked this bed before sowing, but we've got a lot of rain coming. Some today and over the next few days there'll be plenty, so I really don't need to bother with that today. So, uh, Again, I'll get three rows in here. So this one I will sow a little more thickly than the other. These will still need to be thinned, of course, but because these plants crop so quickly, they don't have a chance really to bulk up like the others, so they can be left fairly close together, actually. And you only get small heads off of these. I hope I will get larger heads off of the 90-day variety. I should do. So I'm over at this little patch of salad that we've got growing in some lengths of guttering. This is a fun way to do it. I've got three tiers of this stuff so I can sort of have a succession of it. Now I sowed these not that long ago and I sowed them quite thickly because it is um, rather reluctant to germinate sometimes during the, the heat of summer, but then we've had a little bit cooler weather and I had them covered with this shade netting so they've actually germinated very well and they are far too close together so I'm just going to go through and thin these out they will grow much better if I give them a sensible amount of space yeah I was rather heavy-handed here but um, this is obviously going to be a cut and come again crop which I'll be harvesting for for small leaves, but even so, giving it plenty of room is, is a good idea. I'm going to get much better quality leaves if I give them a bit of space. So a few inches between each plant, two or three inches, that will be fine. And then my next job is to sow some rocket in the bottom tier. rather clumsy but you never know you never know during hot weather lettuce doesn't want to germinate the shade netting I think did a, a really good job it prevented the soil drying out and kept things cooler here I'll definitely be using the shade netting on here again because without it I think germination would have been really rather rather poor. Would have saved me a job here though. Right. That's nice now. I've got you know a few inches between each each plant and that gives them that gives them a, a reasonable amount of room to grow and then I'm going to get some great quality leaves off of these. You get small, papery, thin leaves if they're crowded. It's not a huge amount of soil in a length of gutter like this, but it it is enough to grow some reasonable salad leaves actually. We've done this many times before. And especially during the warmer months when uh, the plants tend to run to seed quite quickly. It's, it's very difficult to keep lettuce going during the height of summer. It's good to have this succession going. We really haven't used it to its best advantage this year, but um, hopefully we'll get a nice crop off of this now. 
won't be too long. A couple of weeks we'll be able to start picking. Oh, what did I do here? I'll give that a drop of water in a minute just to help settle the roots around anything that I might have disturbed there. Oh, I don't have a huge amount of space in this little corner. So it's always awkward working on these. But... So rocket, of course, will form a fairly large plant and that's not what I want here. I just want some small leaves. I don't need to sow that very thickly at all. It should germinate fine. And I just want this to take a handful of leaves when I'm picking the, the lettuce, as this will really brighten up the salad. And although you can plant this at, at quite reasonable spacings for full-size plants, just like the lettuce, really, it grows quite happily in more confined environments and you can use it as a cut and come again crop pretty much the same way. I'm trying another peat free compost here. So many of them are just fluffy and fibrous. I mean, a bit of fiber in the in a compost is absolutely fine, it's not bad really. But this stuff is just all fluff. It's so weird now. I'm sure I used to be able to get much better peat-free compost. Ones that actually looked a little bit like compost. I don't know what this stuff is. There's obviously a lot of wood in there and, and some other fibrous material. It's got the strangest texture. doesn't spread properly it clumps together it really is bizarre so I'm back in the little greenhouse now and I'm going to do some sowing in some cell trays now, I'm waiting for the moment when I want to start out what is probably the more or less the last batch of seeds. And I think it's still a little bit too early for those. I want to sow some mustard, some komatsuna, tatsoi, things like that. And I don't really have the space for them yet. I'm waiting really for space to become free in the polytunnel and then the greenhouses. But of course, unless we get really bad blight or the weather's so miserable that everything gets wiped out with botrytis, then the tomatoes and peppers are going to be going for quite a while yet. So that space really isn't going to become free. I don't want to sow this stuff too early because most of those sort of oriental veg, they're brassicas, they do better in the cooler parts of the year. So I'm not in a hurry with those and I'm thinking towards the end of August would be okay for that. But there are a few things I need to get going today. I need to sow some more parsley because most of what I've got out there at the moment has run to seed. I need to sow some Napa cabbage, the so-called Chinese leaves. Now, I'm not an expert with those. I may have the timing a little bit wrong, but I think with a bit of luck, I'll be able to get these into the greenhouses to continue. Um, I've got some dwarf beans in there at the moment. They're kind of tied up. I'm not using the beans. I've got beans outside that we're using for fresh. We've just got those tied up to canes to uh, let those beans mature and hopefully start drying. Now they're not that far away. I should be able to pull those plants and tie them up um, in a little while. So if we're lucky with the timing, these Napa cabbage will be ready to go in once the dwarf beans are out. Otherwise, I don't know where I'm going to put them. And that would be true also if I had lots of mustard and tatsoi and so on. 
I've got space, I think, for the brassicas I've already sown, um, some savoy cabbages, sprouting broccoli to go into next year, things like that. I, I should have room for those, but I'm not going to have room for all of those other plants until the tunnel and greenhouses have been cleared down. The final thing I'm going to sow today is some more chard. Now, this wasn't part of the plan. I've already planted out in a recent video some Swiss chard. It's a, a white ribbed sort. And that was supposed to be my last batch of chard. But I really do love the chard. Um, I haven't even grown spinach this year because I, I, I rather favor the chard instead. So the white rib stuff is great. Um, I did kind of fancy a red ribbed sort as well. The ribs aren't quite so large with the rhubarb chard, but they have a bit more of that earthy beet flavor. And that's something that I like at least. I, I know not everybody's so keen on that earthy taste, but I thought I'd get some rhubarb chard going. I'm not entirely sure where it's going to go yet. It, it may go in the old onion bed. I've also got the beetroot seedlings that I thinned out in a recent video. They've got to go somewhere as well. There might be space for, for those two in one bed. As always, shooting reasonable footage in this space is a little bit difficult. So I've got some more rather fluffy stuff here. And I'm just going to fill these uh, cell trays. These are quite a good sized cell, so the plant should be quite happy in there. This is woody stuff. Really not great. I mean, you can't sieve this either. There'd be nothing left. You take out all of that fibre and woody material. I don't think it would go through a sieve very happily. Um, Right, I'm not filling that too tight at this stage. Just brush that off. And then I can just firm those cells down a little bit. Oh, this is really soft stuff. So I'll start with the chard. You get many seeds in a packet of this stuff. Um, I think I'll put two or three seeds in each and I will thin those plants later. Now I don't mind planting these in a in a clump, but I don't want more than three plants in each in each clump, so I will probably get quite a few from each cell now. You can get more than one from each seed. I don't know where I'm going to put quite so many plants. This stuff is, this stuff is terrible. I'm not pressing down very hard here. I'm just trying to firm it a little bit because this this compost is so fluffy. Right, that will do. So I will sow, um, how much am I going to sow of each? Well, this tray is really far too big. Um, so I'm going to end up with lots of spares, but better that way than the other way round. Um, I'll sow half the tray with the cabbage and well, I'm going to end up with far more plants than I need here. And then I can be choosy about the ones that I grow on. I'm aiming for about three seeds in each cell and then I can 
thin those later. Uh, I think I'll do an extra row of the cabbage. I won't need it, I'm sure, but you never know. If germination is poor or a rampaging slug comes and takes out some of the seedlings. With a bit of luck, I'll still have plenty left. Germination of parsley can be just a wee bit sporadic, so again I want a, a little pinch of seed in each one. And then I will thin them later. too lazy today to label them up. I will no doubt be able to spot the difference between a cabbage and parsley, so I'm not that worried. I want to get out of the garden before the rain comes and it is on its way. Well, it looks like I got that done just in time as the heavy rain has just appeared. So I'm going to get out of the garden. I will do some more sowing probably towards the end of the month. But that is all for this video. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now.